Hey everyone, I'm Jay Smith, and this is Bradley Kendall, and this is After Further Review, and tonight we're going to be bringing you a very special preview episode of next season's college football playoff. Basically this week we are going to go back over the teams that we selected as our favorites from each conference for the college football playoff for this upcoming season. We're going to dive into them a bit more in depth, starting with the ACC in just a second. But Bradley, after further review. Who's in? Yeah. That's the question we all want to know. That is the question. And it's hard to believe we're already asking this. It's, you know, the middle of March. Yep. But we're it's already... basketball time, but hey. Yeah. Can never not talk about football. That's absolutely yeah. right. We're already getting into the playoff for this coming season. Starting with the ACC, though, uh, last week or the two weeks prior, I went with the Florida State Seminoles. And I kind of... Good pick. Yeah, I went into... I looked at... Um, and we, we talked about, you know... <laughs> Can Clemson repeat for the third time and win their third straight ACC championship? You know, is Louisville going to be able to step up? Is it going to be Florida State? It's probably going to be one of those three teams. Mm -hmm. I think we kind of agree that the Coastal is not quite there. Not but yet. There are teams like Miami mm -hmm. and and um, you know Virginia Tech, who are obviously hopefully going to be pretty strong this yep. year. And who knows, maybe a team like Georgia Tech may, may, may make a run. But it's probably down to three, you're right. Probably yeah. down to those three. Uh, and looking at FSU's schedule, they have Bama at a neutral location to open the season, which is a heck of a test. Luckily for Nothing them, harder. right, luckily for them, it's not going to affect their conference. No, but in terms of the playoff, it, it always goes. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Uh, and then they play Clemson and Florida on the road. So two tough, you know, it's, it's not easy, obviously, to play at Clemson and then playing a rivalry game at the end of the season at Florida yeah. in the Swamp. It's going to be tricky. But they do have key games against Louisville and Miami at home. Um, Which is good this year for sure. Yep. Absolutely. I mean, the, the you know thrashing that they got from Louisville last season, you would think that they'll be out for revenge in that game. In yep. addition, with Miami, they lost by a point last year. You'd think they'd be out for revenge in that game as well. I think no they lost 19-20. to 20. I'm sure Jimbo um, will have it on the TV throughout yeah. the week. Yeah, they, and they – I mean, I don't think that it's – it's a stretch to say they had a lackluster season this past year. But in terms of them. But yeah. it, it kind of fell short of their expectations. Yeah, they did close the season out well with the bowl win, though, in the Orange Bowl. For they sure. did. Yeah, yeah they, but, they yeah. finished strong. But there was, you know, more, they were aspiring to a little bit higher than what they achieved no doubt, no doubt. this past season. Especially with Dalvin Cooks last year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I hear it'll be, you know, be such a threat at the next level. But, you know, Duran James is now healthy. Um, and, you know, they have – it's Florida State. They're loaded with talent. Um, I did read the other week that Jimbo is actually using a rather interesting motivational tactic. What he's doing is he's having uh, players that underperform at practice, they wear the color orange ah. because it's the color of all the – it's the color of Clemson, it's the color of Miami, Florida. it's the color of Florida. So by, you know, using that as a motivational tool, it's, it's actually served its purpose fairly well. And again, they've circled games like Louisville and Miami that are going to be at Doak Campbell probably going to be night games. One of those is more than likely going to be game day. No doubt. Yeah. And they've got, you know, opening the season against Bama. They've got Clemson and Florida. Those are five huge games right there. And then they're still going to have an ACC schedule that some could argue is going to be stronger than it's been in the past. So Florida State has a tough road, don't get me wrong. But, you know, we um, kind of talked about how it's probably going to be Louisville or Florida State. Mm -hmm. And my thought at this point is, you know, pro obviously prior to the start of the regular season is, since that game between those two teams is at Florida State, that's why I'm giving the nod to the Seminoles. Fair enough, fair enough. Yeah, I like to pick with Florida State. Obviously, a lot of people are going to be picking them going into this year. Tremendous mm -hmm. amount of talent. I went on the other side of the spectrum. I decided to go with Louisville, mainly because of the returning Heisman Trophy winner. you got Lamar Jackson. I know he's going to be losing a lot of pieces. He's got his two top wide receivers that are now going to the draft. But he still returns a lot. I mean, Bobby Petrino, heck of a coach, is able to – get these guys ready for this season. Mm -hmm. And, you know, with the threat behind the backfield that Lamar Jackson is, I think he just poses a threat to any defense, no matter where the game is. Yeah, I mean, that's fair. I mean, he obviously torched Clemson in the third quarter at the, at the game uh, this past season in Death Valley. Um, you know, he didn't finish how... Yeah. Which was a bit odd. Yeah, yeah. it was. It was, it was a bit... So hopefully he can avoid that sophomore slump because I would like yeah. to see him do well. Um, but, yeah, I, again, I, I think and we kind of, you know, agree there that it's going to be between Louisville and Florida State. Not yeah. to say that Clemson's not going to be talented. They've surprised us in the past. Yeah, yeah. and it's impressive to go back-to-back -back ACC champs, mm -hmm. but I just think the fact that it's more of a reloading year for Clemson, they're still they're, – they're, they have their quarterback situation sort of figured out. It's still in the making. But until yeah. you start playing those games come August, you're not going to really know. And Florida State and especially Louisville mm -hmm. have that – figured out already and especially for Clemson I mean the tough start is just going to be right there immediately I mean they're gonna have games right off the bat it's 
mm -hmm. could possibly put him in a hole to start the year. Yeah. Uh, one of the other reasons I also went with Louisville looking at their schedule. Honestly, besides the Florida State game and the Clemson game uh, throughout the year, it's basically pretty easy. It's almost like a cakewalk. Now, I did say that about the end of the year last year when they had Kentucky and all those teams, but yeah. they did surprise us with a couple losses there. But, I mean, you know, Purdue, Carolina's not going to be that good. you got Kent State, Murray State. Not really the strongest of teams, which could hurt them down the road if they, you know, Possibly. fight for a playoff spot. But, but if they're blowing teams out like they did at the start of the last exactly, season, then, yeah. Yeah, you know. It works both ways. It so does. They're going to have to impress us, but there's plenty of opportunities, obviously, for big games like we said before. So. Yeah. I think it's going to be a toss-up. That one game, Louisville, yeah. Florida State, is going to determine everything. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, and I think the winner of that game not only plays in the ACC championship, I think they win, and I think they that team, whoever wins yeah. that game, will will play in the college Unless football Unless something playoff. weird happens, two, three losses for each team. Possibly, yeah. You, you just, you just never know. I you mean, you can have a game like last year with, with, I know it didn't really affect anything in the long run, but, but UNC, Florida State. Yep. And the last second field goal and everything. So it could always be the coastal spoiler in the ACC championship. You never know. Absolutely. Uh, moving on, though, to the Big Ten. For this conference, I had Penn State. And looking at their schedule, they do have tough away games <laughs> against Ohio State. Uh, and Michigan State is an away game. You know, they, they didn't have a great year last year. But you would LJ think. L.J. Scott's returning. You would think that yep. it would be hard to go into Michigan State uh, on the road and get a win. Uh, they do play Michigan at home which is going to be big That'll for be them. Big. Yep. Uh, and the rest of their schedule, really looking at it, it's just going to be a breeze. I mean, they're playing Akron, Georgia State, at Iowa, Indiana, Northwestern, Rutgers, Maryland. I mean, there's nobody. Hopefully a bunch of wins there. <laughs> I would yeah. hope so. There's nobody on there that I'm really like, ooh, they might trip up the Nittany Lions. Kind of like Louisville, I guess, in a way, like their schedule, the way it's balanced out. Possibly, yeah. I mean, you know, the, the only part of it that really looks meaty to me is about a little over halfway through because they play, and this is really the gauntlet of their schedule, Michigan at Ohio State, at Michigan State, back to back to back. No bye weeks. Wow. Everything up, up to that point should be a win. So at the, at the worst, Penn State should be 9-3. and three. If they, oh, I'd if, say even just 10-2. and two. Well, yeah, I mean, I think that they can win all yeah. other, of those other games convincingly, but I think they should be able to knock off Michigan State on the road. I think they have a good shot at beating Michigan at home, and, you know, it just depends on how Ohio State is at that point in the season. If Penn State should, you know, again, 9-3 and three worst case scenario, but I think 11, you know, even undefeated season is not out of their reach. If they play well, avoid injuries, um, and just don't, not show up to a game. Yeah, I mean, Trace McSurley returning, Heisman candidate going into this year, and you know, proved to be a reliable starter uh, for at quarterback for Penn State. And Saquon Barkley, the running back, I believe yeah. he's coming back, and we've heard plenty of things about him. They're going to be a one-two duo in the backfield for sure. And the fact that they were able to make it to the Rose Bowl last year, kind of have a bit of a breakout. I mean, I know mm -hmm. Penn State obviously has a storied history, but the fact that they had such success towards the end of that season, they got into the Rose Bowl, they had a taste of that glory, that yeah. former glory that they were, they're, you know, their fan base is so accustomed to and so hungry for, mm -hmm. um, and I think they're, I think they're hungry for it. I think I they're ready. Are. I think James Franklin is ready to put them back as a national powerhouse, and I really like Penn State going into this season. Their schedule plays in their favor. Um, they have, I guess, one hard away game uh, with Ohio State. You know, Michigan State remains to be seen. But everything else for them should be a cakewalk. And like we saw last year, I mean, you can lose a game against the team you're competing with, like Ohio State, and still find a way to make it to the playoffs. So yeah. Penn State may have the case to get revenge this year. Um, I went, like, a, like I said, in the ACC, the other side of things, I went with Ohio State. Uh, one of the teams, obviously, they're going to be competing for the uh, not only the Big Ten, but the playoff. Um, and you, you were know, high on Ohio State last season. I was. And even as the youngest team, they were surprising yeah. everyone. Ran through, obviously ran into a brick wall in Clemson to end the year. But yeah. I just, I love what they return. I mean, outside, kind of like Louisville, they're returning their quarterback, which is huge. JT Barrett, you know, proven, proven reliable quarterback. Uh, outside of that, they will be losing some on the outside. Uh, a little bit on the defense, too. But they were the youngest team in the country, like I said before. And with Urban Myers, the coach, you know, I trust him to at least get them to a 10-2 and two season, you would think. If and with better. that, you know, again, we, we – I mean, obviously, everybody knows the outcome of the PlayStation Fiesta Bowl. I mean, they just got annihilated. But with they still got experience. You know, they made at, it there. At, they made yeah. it there, right? Um, you know, some say dessert, some say not. But point is, is, they made it, and you know, obviously, they did not put on the type of performance that they wanted to put on. So hopefully, that would, in you know, carry over. Carry over, yeah. and you'd think that they'd want to get back to it and prove that they do belong there. They do belong in the college football playoff. Um, and it is interesting because both now with the ACC and the Big Ten, I think we both agree it's going to come down to one particular game. 
that's really yeah. going to be, and, and if I'm not mistaken, both Penn State and Ohio State are in the East? They're division. in the same division. They're I think it's the, is it the East? Is, I think maybe it's the. I don't know actually, but I know they're in the same division. Okay. I don't know the actual name of it, but um, they're in the same one. Yeah, big. They, they are in the Big Ten. Big Ten East. East. That makes um, sense. And I'm okay. pretty sure Ohio State is in the Big Ten East. I can. But yeah, like the ACC. I mean, it's not it, like they're that, on opposite sides. Yeah. It'll it's going to be a division game. race. Yeah, which is going to be huge. I mean, especially if one team beats the other and they have the tiebreaker. Um, Ohio State, a, a tough test to, to begin the year. I'm going to talk about this later against Oklahoma. Mm-hmm. Kind of unlike Penn State, they have a non-conference game that they can use for their resume yeah. if they were to trip up later in the year. Um, but Big Ten schedule is not overly tough. They play at Iowa, play and, Michigan State, and at that home. could be. And that's interesting you point that out because that could be huge. If you're looking at Penn State's conference non-conference schedule, it's pretty weak. I mean, I just listed Akron, Georgia State. I mean, Reminds that's me Baylor. That's weak. So if Ohio State gets a huge win against Oklahoma, who you know is going to be hyped up mm-hmm. to start the season. And let's say they, you know, do falter against Penn State. If Penn State falters somewhere along the road, that one win may make the difference. In the season. In the season, yeah. exactly. So I think it will come down to those two teams. You know, and it is at Ohio State. It the is. The game is at is, Ohio State. It's and huge. that's a hard yep, place to win. The definitely win you a game. So kind of on the flip side, because I picked Florida State because it was at home, but just feel better about Penn State's schedule. Um, but I can see where you're coming from. Yeah because that game is at home, and if they're able to get that big win against Oklahoma, that already puts them well above, yep. well above Penn State in terms of you know quality wins. So two tough conferences to call, I would say, so yeah, far. Yeah, it's, it's pretty close. Especially in the spring right now. We don't know for sure yet what it's going to be like. Well, moving on, we're going to look at the Big 12, and for the Big 12, I went with Oklahoma. Um, As did I. Yeah, not yeah. really. Um, I know a lot of people are high on Oklahoma State. Yes. Yeah, the team down at Stillwater. Um, yes. But I think and we both agree to that. They Oklahoma. do have um, Oklahoma does play Oklahoma State away this year. Yeah. Which, you know, obviously that's a rivalry game and anything can happen in that. And if Oklahoma State does get out, you know, if they're able to win and Oklahoma State goes home with a loss, then you're really not, it would just have to remain to be seen. I did find it peculiar. I'm looking at the schedule now. It's not at the end of the year, actually. The Oklahoma Oklahoma State. The game State is game. not? It is not. It is November 4th, so about five weeks before the end of the year. Which is Who a bit, are they going to play a afterwards? Bit odd. They have T- TCU at Kansas and then West Virginia. So they're still the playing out. conference games after, after that. Their so they, I mean, game. it'll be middle. I guess you could say middle of the year. So both teams still have a chance, even if one beats the other, to rise back up or even fall. I mean, like a game against West Virginia. Yeah. Well, I mean, Oklahoma. They have Texas and West Virginia at home. Uh, you know, a lot of people said West Virginia may be a dark horse to win the Never Big know. Twelve, and yeah, you know, we'll just have to see with Texas. A lot of transition still going on there. You know, we can't expect for them to contend yet with like a perennial powerhouse mm-hmm. like Oklahoma. Um, and, you know, I mean, we'll just have to remain like with Trey Sermon, their running back. I mean, he could be a difference maker. We just don't know yet. Got some big shoes to fill. He Mixon's does. gone. He P-Rod's does. Gone. Yep. Um, but I think that, you know, Oklahoma, more so than the ACC in the Big Ten, Oklahoma is still kind of a little bit above everyone else. Mm-hmm. Oklahoma's here. It's almost like an SEC, but maybe not quite to bit. that extent. Yep. And so until I see something from a West Virginia or an Oklahoma State that proves to me, okay, they can contend with Oklahoma, I feel like at this point you just have to give the nod to the yeah. Sooners. I think you do until someone dethrones them at this point. And, you know, Oklahoma yeah. State going to have one of the top offenses in the country. Um, and we mentioned earlier that Ohio State plays Oklahoma. It's going to be at Ohio State, which if you're Oklahoma State, if you're thinking, hey, if Ohio State or if, uh, Oklahoma trips up there, and we can knock them out later in the year. That basically takes out Oklahoma out of the playoff race. So, mm-hmm. never know. It'll be interesting. But having Baker Mayfield back with his offensive coordinator, that's just going to be huge. That's going like, to be hard to stop. I feel like the guy's been there for five years. As long as he doesn't get into more trouble with the cops and trying to run away, I think. I mean, wasn't he? he should be okay. Wasn't he playing against Clemson in the? Um, he started the he started, Orange Bowl, right? Yeah, that was. Three, four years ago. He started at what, Texas Tech, I believe, and then finally Maybe. came to Oklahoma. I, don't know if he I guess he sat out a, a lot, year. So. I feel like he's been playing forever. Oh, my gosh. God just needs to graduate already. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll move on, though, to the Pac-12. And for this conference, I kind of went with, I guess, a bit of a sleeper. I went Colorado. They played well last season. They, they you know, reminded me of the old Stanford, mm-hmm. really in-your-face, you know, punch-in-the-mouth, physical kind of football. Uh, looking at their schedule, they have UCLA, Washington State, and Utah on the road. 
and then they're going to have Washington, Arizona, Cal, and USC at home. It's not very easy. It's not very easy, but I think the key there is USC and Washington at home. Yep. Because I'd say out of those six, seven teams, those are the two that really stick out. Mm -hmm. You know Washington's going to be good because Browning's back. He's going to be able to light up the scoreboard. And USC's going to be loaded. Will they have a coach that... Helton's there now. He yeah. seems like the guy. We'll, we'll see with USC. I mean, I'd, I'd like to see them kind of get back to it at least being consistently decent. Um, but I think mm. having those two games at home will help That's Colorado. Huge. And especially if they're able to play physical, maybe keep the score total down, make it a, you know, possession, you know, a, um, a field management uh, whatever the term is, that's not the right term, but but you I know, know what talking about like say, yeah. field possession game, yeah, where, where yeah. you you know if they're able to do that to those kinds of teams, I think they have a pretty good shot at winning the Pac-12. Which will not be an easy task because we saw a glimpse of last season what Sam Darnold at USC can do and what Jake yeah. Browning can do at Washington. Yeah, they got some good quarterbacks in the Pac-12. I went with the the best quarterback of last year, Jake Browning in Washington, losing John Ross as top target, but he does have a guy stepping up that had 15 touchdowns last year, um, so that'll be his top target. Uh, Washington, kind of the same case as last year, how they, I was kind of a doubter with them. Their non-conference schedule is very weak. Yeah. Rutgers, Montana, Fresno State, and right into Colorado. So not much preparation. I think what's just going to be huge is the fact that they were tested last year. Browning got the experience. They're returning a they did. They made bulk the of their off. defense. Yeah. Um, so right now, until I see anything different, I'm going to go with Washington, just the team that I trust the most. A lot of people picking USC. It is interesting because of how high I was on Washington last season. We switched roles. And you were not. You were like, no, nah, well, Washington. Well, something proved me wrong. And, I was not going to believe it. And, it, I mean, honestly, again, I, I thought about it for a long time before I picked Colorado. And I was like, you know, I was high on Washington. I really like Browning. I thought he should have, you know, at least had a chance at mm -hmm. the Heisman. And, um, and maybe the Pac-12 championships is fresh in my head, and I'm not giving Colorado its due. Possibly, but, but I just think at the end of the day, I really was impressed with Colorado's defense. Um, and, you know, they're, they're talented, mm -hmm. obviously, and they're young, so they're all coming back, and that should just continue to yeah. – they should, they should just, in, you know, continue to improve. And speaking of improving, I was reading a stat where it said that Colorado won seven more conference games – than last season, which is the best improvement in conference play in Pac-12 history. That's why McIntyre won Coach of the Year. Huge turnaround. Mm -hmm. Huge turnaround. Will they be able to sustain that next se this coming season? You know, I'm not sure. I mean, I, I think that they will be able to because their defense is returning, mm -hmm. and that's really their that was their strong suit last season. Um, but that remains to be seen. And, and obviously, I would say that Washington is for sure the safe pick. No, no, no. Because you know yeah. Browning. We don't know what USC is going to be yeah, yet. We've school. seen them be hyped up before. They yeah, got kind of the USC, Michigan treatment. Yeah, you're never really sure. So we'll see what goes on there. But, yeah, like you were saying about Colorado, it's a system. They've got a yeah. system that's been proven to work, and they can just throw anybody in there. Mm -hmm. You know, some random quarterback came in last year during the Pac-12 championship and actually did pretty well. So yeah. it remains to be seen. But, yeah, I think the Pac-12 is slowly rising back up after Oregon fell off. It's starting to get more teams that can compete. Deeper for, conference. It's absolutely. Deeper no conference doubt about it. Yep. For sure. Uh, last conference that we're going to look at, obviously, the SEC. Um, I don't think there's really any discrepancy here. If we tried to say any other team, people would laugh at us. Yeah, at it's still Alabama. Um, you know, look, we'll look at their schedule really quick. Obviously, they have that opener uh, with Florida State. I don't <clears> know if the, has a location been determined yet. It is, is that in be Atlanta, in Georgia. Atlanta. Basically, the second home for Bama. So that's well, it's, it's pretty neutral. It's neutral-ish. Yep. It's more neutral than like Dallas. What's interesting is the game in Atlanta, the playoff is actually going to be in Atlanta. So you could oh. see, uh, is it the playoff or the championship? I can't quite remember. I know there's a postseason game there. I think it's the, so. it's the championship. Might be the championship. I think it is the championship. So you could see this again later in the year. You never know. Well, they open with FSU. Uh, then they're going to play Texas A&M and Auburn <laughs> on the road. That, you know, A&M will see how much of a threat they are. Obviously, Auburn on the road. That's always... And then LSU. You're circling that and paying attention to that. And they have Tennessee and LSU mm -hmm. at home. They also do have Old Miss and Arkansas. I can't really say that I would be too yeah. worried about Old Miss and Arkansas. Especially Old Miss at this point. But the SEC has proven me wrong before with perceived depth and mm -hmm. teams being able to, may not be able to beat Alabama, but at least give them fits for three or more quarters. And Tennessee's had success in, at you know, uh, Brian Denny Stadium before we yeah. saw it a couple years ago where they yeah. nearly knocked off Bama, took them out of the playoff contention. So, um, yeah, the, I mean, the SEC right now, if Bama's going to be reigning at any time, this is the best time to do it because the SEC is just not quite there yet. I mean, Auburn will probably be top 15 preseason, but when you return uh, their starting quarterback, Jalen Hurts, you got yeah. Bo Scarborough, 
top to bottom. I mean, they're bringing in recruits that are going to start immediately and be top one of the top best in the conference. So. I mean, you know, obviously with them <laughs> making the championship two years in a row and and, and um, winning two years back and then losing this past season to Clint, like that's bullish to doubt them. It is. It is. And you know, I mean, you. It was the game was so back and forth. Obviously, those were the two best teams in the country, and. If somebody asked me, well, who do you think is losing more talent? I'd say Clemson's losing more talent. I would say Clemson's that too. losing almost everyone that was really an impact player mm-hmm. on the field during that championship game. Alabama, they're losing maybe. Jalen Hurts was a couple. freshman. Let's, exactly. Let's not forget so, that. So, you know, they're still a team to beat. <laughs> they're ridiculously consistent. Best I coach get, in the country. Yeah, I mean, I get just as tired of it as, you know, y'all do from hearing it, but, yep. you know, they play Florida State to open, then they go Fresno State, Colorado State, Vanderbilt, Old Miss, then they do have A&M, Arkansas, and Tennessee, and LSU, but other than that, they've got Mississippi State, Mercer, and Auburn, should be cruise control. That them. Florida State game, if it's not already said that it's going to be huge, it's going to be enormous, because if anyone's going to have a chance to knock off Bama out of the playoff, if Florida State can put them in 0-1, the pressure's really on them. Huge Because we have not seen a two-loss team make the playoff yet. Well, it's, it would be, it's a huge ACC-SEC season open. It's enormous. It's yeah. I think it's almost bigger than when Clemson and, and Georgia played. Like, well, this would be one versus two. So, I mean, it's hard to... Oh, you think they'll be ranked? I would you, bet money on it right so? now. It would be one, two. Not oh, only maybe. because they're probably the top huge. two most talented teams, but for this buildup. I mean... College football yeah, would love that to start the that's, year. That would be why. I don't. Has that ever happened? Has the number one, number two ever opened the season? There's usually not many other? big games to start the year. Not rarely even top ten matchups. Yeah, so, this I mean, this this is um, one year in particular coming up that I think is going to have a lot of good games the first week. Right before we get into conference play, um, we're going to have some really exciting matchups. And you know, obviously with how Florida State performed against Louisville last year in a big game, you could argue that Florida State may not show up, but. But I think they'll be ready to have the entire offseason to prepare. They know what Bama was capable of. The question in everybody's minds is, can Florida State at least match it? It's going to be tough. Yeah. It's going to be very – one thing they just need to get is an offensive line. Yeah. Francois was run for his life last year at quarterback. Yeah. He's probably just getting over his concussions from this past season. Um, but that's going to be huge. I know Jimbo Fisher has been hounding on that for basically the entire offseason. Just need to get that offensive line going. You know, they've probably got a solid backup for Dalvin Cook, I would imagine. Um, you know, they're going to be tremendously talented. So. That's Florida State. They're, they're going to have Florida recruits. State. They're in yep. the state of Florida. They're going to have recruits. Um, but I think it's safe to say, though, after looking at all the different conferences, I know we had a few discrepancies in who we picked, but I think it's safe, a very safe bet that at least three out of the four playoff teams for next season – are, are right there in front of us. If I would bet money on four, it, yeah, at this point. It's not all four. I mean, two without a doubt, I'd say three would be a good estimation, and, and maybe if we're lucky, four. Um, but I feel like there are, I mean, there's a good amount of teams that can compete. Oh, I mean, we're seeing more and more teams starting absolutely. to build the programs up, like absolutely. USC, um, Oklahoma State is going to be good, Auburn potentially, and even Clemson. Yeah. So. yeah. Some of these are safe picks. Some of them more out on a limb. I guess you could say, you know, Colorado's more out on a limb. Um, there's nothing really... I mean, Alabama's safe. Oklahoma's pretty safe. Either Florida State or Louisville's probably safe. That's pick. safe. O- Ohio State, Penn State, that's probably pretty safe. Um, but you're right, it's college football. We'll, we'll, yep. we'll just have to see kind of what happens. Going to the other side of things, not safe picks, and something you can never, ever guarantee is March Madness. Absolutely. And it's that time of year. It is First that First games are tonight. Going um, on right now, aren't they? Going on right now. The yeah, playing games are happening. Them. We're missing We've got to hurry up so people can go watch them, yeah. Um, but, you know, I was reading it in an article. This was interesting. I, I'm sure many people have checked into this. Um, you know, in honor of March Madness, people were coming out with what would a March Madness college football bracket look like? And mm. it's, it's interesting. I mean, obviously you won't have 64 teams or 68 teams because that just would never I'd, happen. I'd love a 32 team. You never have. But if you had a 16 team bracket, that. this is what they said that would happen last year. If you had, all right, so it's not just the 16 best teams. You have 16, not only conference qualifiers, but at large bids. So okay. not just power five teams, but there's, other so teams other, so not just the Power Five. Not just the Power Five. Okay. So you started out, you had your 116 matchup was Alabama and Appalachian State oh out of the Sun Belt Conference. Goodness. We know who probably won that one, but, you know, still interesting for App State to be there. Uh, your number nine seed would be USC as an at-large, playing Wisconsin as an at-large. Potentially mm. Alabama-USC second round. That would Woo. be fun. Man. Uh, you, your 12-5 would be, and we've seen 12-5 be huge in basketball, yeah. Western Michigan and Penn State. 
Oh, wow. So your classic David versus Goliath there. That's Penn, Western Michigan's the Mac. They were out in the Mac, yeah. The Mac, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. You know, did okay in the game yeah. against Wisconsin in yeah. the Cotton Bowl. Yeah. Uh, number 13 C was Temple, taking on number four, Washington. Ooh, that's Washington all Lots day. Lots of points scored there. That's but I think Washington, Washington all day. That. All day. Uh, number 14 was San Diego State. The, uh, what's his face? Donald Pumphrey, the running back. Yep. And Ohio State. The three fourteen matchup. Well, I'd say Ohio State, but after they perform in the field, not when you don't score any points. <laughs> I, I still would pick Ohio State. I probably would too. Yeah. Uh, number eleven, Florida State, and number six, Michigan. What we actually got to see last year, the Florida yeah. State Michigan game, that was, yeah. Florida State, and it was an that. amazing game, classic game, amazing game. Uh, number ten, Colorado. Number seven, Oklahoma. Defense versus offense, right wow. there. Wow, that's. Um, yeah. And then, last but not least, uh, number fifteen, Western Kentucky, out of Conference USA, taking out our Clemson Tigers. Probably a safe bet to go to Clemson there. Um, yeah. But honestly, like, I, the four-team playoff I enjoy. I know people talk about this all the time. Uh, if yeah, you, it's, I could see it going to eight, though. Eight it's eventually. Go, it's going to go I think four is set in stone for about four more years. Please but. give me 16, because that would just be oh, it amazing. Would. Get rid of all these bowl games that nobody cares about. You don't get, like the famous Idaho Potato Bowl? No. <laughs> just give me, like, three weeks of a quality playoff. Because I know that you can't play more than one game a week. I get that. Yeah. And you don't want to have them playing 16, 17, 18 games. But, I mean, some of these teams we're talking about, like but Washington. It, but you could even cut the regular season. like Take out the Montana get, game. Get I rid mean, of these two ga- two or three games that you play a year that are meaningless. Yeah. They are meaningless. Either come up with a preseason or get rid of them. Play 10 games, seven or eight conference games, it doesn't matter, and then go straight to the postseason. That would work perfectly. It's totally reasonable. And I mean, I mean, people were. And conference championships could be a buy in. I mean, like, you, you know. People were complaining it'd be too much games. Teams already played 15 games. I mean, it's almost yeah, like NFL Clemson season. Would Clemson be playing was 14 15, and 1. They played 30 games this past So, I mean, two if seasons. you're going to do a playoff, it's honestly probably the same thing at this point. I mean, maybe one more game tacked on. I, it, but... I think it's just a money issue with the bowl games and sponsorships. But I, I think that eight will probably be what it becomes, and people will be satisfied with eight. Yeah. Because um, at least eight, you can. Suffer a loss or two and not be completely And if I'm not mistaken, the the other issue really is this: the the historically <clears throat> big bowl games are always played on New Year's, right? Mm-hmm. They're always played on New Year's. New Year's six. Well, yeah. right. If those are like the you have to make those like the second round, like the final four mm-hmm. type of games, because if you go if you play another round just to get to the if if those big historic bowl games are your first round. And then you have another round, and then you have you a championship game. Yeah. Not only will you need more bowls, you're going to take up more weeks into NFL playoffs, and Very that's true. just not going to happen. Very when it true. Comes so to money. start earlier then. You're, yeah, but they're not going to push back the dates of those bowl games. My thought is that they Point. have to use those bowl games as they are. They'd have to sh- either move up the start of the college football regular season, or they have to shorten it. Yeah. Get rid of a couple weeks. Get rid of the bye. Like just something, because otherwise you're going to conflict with NFL playoffs and that's too much of a money-making machine that's something i never thought networks. of detail wise you need to keep those games traditionally on new year's day stuff like yeah that. i think they, they're moving that's it what they do coming up soon right because they did have one on like new year's eve and now they're going to well it's always new year's day. it's always been new year's eve new year's day yeah that's you have your three of your big six in new year's eve three of your um big six on new year's day and the championship game is played on like the ninth it's monday after seventh maybe next seventh, week eighth, ninth? it's that monday yeah so that. it's a yeah. week after and then if that's and then you have to go another week, you're it's getting pretty close to the Super Bowl. Like, that's AFC, out, yeah. NFC championship time. Yeah. You can't compete with that. You can't do that. NFL is obviously the big boy. Yeah, yeah. That, that won't happen. But I think it's an interesting conversation, especially when you look at the matchups. Yeah. You know, and, I mean, that, that gives you room to not only, you know, expand the playoff, but throw in, like, a team like a Western yeah. Michigan. Yeah. Just give them a chance. I mean, because, like, college basketball, that's what makes it so great is you have – Upset picks, teams have a chance to play with some of the big boys. And Western Michigan's going to get killed, but they still get to play. They still get to play. And yeah. you've seen in the, like the Fiesta Bowl and all that when UCF knocked off Baylor a couple years ago. It's not impossible. Boise State beat Oklahoma. It's not impossible. It could and, always happen. And um, what, NIU, right? They played Florida State. Yeah. And they did a couple years ago. Houston State? beat them. NIU beat them, too, yeah. I believe. Yeah, so. I remember that was a, they playing the Orange Bowl. NIU yeah. played in the Orange Bowl. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it, it can happen. However, it's more, you know, it's probably unlikely. But I, I still think that eight is probably what we'll see in the next five to ten years. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, March Madness coming up. I know you're excited. You're a big basketball head. Are you kidding head. me? So that's, that's, best, that's best all that's going to be on in the apartment for the next three weeks. <laughs> but um, Do you yeah. have a Final Four now that, now that we're bringing it up? Do I have a College Final basketball? Four? Or do you have any picks I, that you're interested I like, in? I'm picking between Duke and Nova for the East. I'm going to go with Duke 
from the east. That's my boy. I'm going to go with, oh, gosh. So we were talking about Duke on a playoff show, uh, college football show. I'm going to go with Louisville from the Midwest. Okay. I'm going to go with ACC so far. UCLA from the south. And I'm going to go with Notre Dame from the west. Three ACC teams in there. Yeah, I, I think. No bias involved in there? No, I no. just, I like, I think it's going to be between Duke and Nova. And then I think it's going to be between Louisville and Purdue. And then I've got um, UCLA playing UNC in the lead eight. And then I've got Gonzaga playing, or I've got Arizona playing Notre Good Dame. Picks. We'll see, though. I don't know. We never I beat know. you last year. Maybe I can beat I you again how. this year. I, yeah. you, I, I won the bracket challenge last year. You so couldn't name one player on any of those teams. <laughs> we'll you see. can find a way to beat me. We'll see how well I do again this year. But that's pretty much going to wrap it up for this week's show. We are doing a Tournament Challenge League. Just throw yes. that in there real quick. After further review, very easy to remember. We'll tweet about it. We'll post about it. Make sure join, our, join our league. See if you can knock off the reigning champ. Hey, man. Hate to say it. It's going to be hard to do. Yep. Uh, but no, that'll pretty much wrap it up for this week's show. Again, we just kind of want to go more in depth at each team that we have picked from each conference for the upcoming season for the College World Playoff. And hopefully, if we get all of our technical issues figured out, we should be able to do some call-ins. And in addition to the Twitter questions that we've yeah. been taking now for a while, we should be able to do call-ins uh, coming after spring break. Yep. I'm looking forward to that. We'll be off next week, spring break. But after that, hope back to in resume. Two weeks. Back into it. Yeah. yeah. So for Bradley Kendall, I'm Jay Smith, and this has been After Further Review. Thanks for watching.